Hi, I'm Danielle, and this is Chatter Out Loud, a podcast where I share thoughts and TV commentary on shows I like to watch. In today's episode, I'm chatting about the new TV series on NBC called The Endgame. We're going to be talking about episode one, titled The Pilot. Um, So let's get into it. In my preview episode on what to expect with the Endgame, I shared the basic storyline and in summary, it's a heist drama about a criminal mastermind who squares off against an FBI agent. The criminal mastermind is Elena Fedorova. Um, She was recently captured. She's a key military strategist and international arms dealer, and she orchestrates seven heists in New York City. The antagonist is an FBI agent. Uh, Her name is Uh, Val Turner, and she vows to take Elena down. Uh, Val is an outcast in the FBI. Um, She's relentless, and she soon learns that she'll have to use clues from her own complicated past to try to decipher Elena's cryptic games. Um, However, as the mystery starts to unravel and secrets are revealed, Val begins to question her own sense of justice when it becomes clear that nothing is as it seems. All right, so that's the summary and the 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 basis the uh, basic premise of the show, the storyline. <clears throat> so in tonight's episode, yeah, tonight's episode, we're introduced with the capture of Elena Fedorova due to 105 federal criminal charges against her and her organization. Um, they want to discuss a plea for her to reveal names of her co- of her contacts, um, and so they hand her a, a, a legal pad for her to write these names down. Um, And she begins to write. Meanwhile, bank heist number one of seven is going down, right? So one of her guys with a sword tattoo on his left arm holds up a sign to the surveillance camera inside of the bank with a note that says, bow to the queen. And this message gets passed to the director of the FBI. And when he goes to confront Fedorova, she's already told the other agent or the attorney general to check his coat pocket. And on the note she wrote uh, when she was writing down where they thought she was writing down names on that note, she um, she wrote down for him to check his coat pocket. So the timing was kind of kind of great. Uh, The bank heist goes down. They show the on the surveillance tape. One of her guys shows the note that says bow to the queen. Um, that message gets passed on to the director. He runs into the room to tell the attorney general, Hey, a bank heist went down. They wrote a note that say bow to the queen. And does she know anything about that? And on the paper that she was writing where they thought she was writing down names, she tells them to the note that she wrote says, check your coat pocket. The attorney general checks his coat pocket. And on that paper, um, while they're trying to figure out what does bow to the queen mean? And who's the queen? He takes the paper out of his pocket and the pocket says, I am the queen. (laughs) I thought that was cleverly done. I like that part. Um, At this point, it was evident that Federova had men on the inside helping her orchestrate everything from the bank heist to her um, all the way through her being captured. Right. Next, we're introduced to Val Turner, Agent Val Turner. Um, she's visiting her husband, who's a former FBI agent, and he happens to be serving time for taking drug money. Um, a criminal, he was taking narc, uh, drug money from a uh, narcotics ring or something like that. Um, and she actually turned her husband in after learning his involvement, or she found out that he may have been involved, and she actually turned her own husband in. Um, and now she's helping to work, uh, she's working to have him release. Well, anyway, she's visiting her husband and what she didn't, she didn't expect was her husband, whose name is Owen. Um, he's working to divorce Val so he can release her from all of his problems. Um, and we'll talk about that later on, um, in this episode. And of course, Val doesn't want this. She doesn't accept it. And so she heads out. As she's heading out, she goes to the location of the bank. Um, she get a call because there's a bank heist. So she goes to the location of the a bank one's heist, um, of where bank one is, the first heist, <laughs> uh, and is sent away um, from her superior. And as a result of her husband's arrest, she feels that the FBI is trying to muscle her out of the agency. Um, 
They don't let her work on, um, you know, work in the field. They think she's um, dirty, you know, a dirty cop and things like that. Um, she's determined, she meaning Agent Val Turner, she's determined that she will find out why her husband took the money, and you know, and eventually let, that led him to jail. And she wants to earn her respect back and and and, and she's going to refuse to accept the divorce from her hus- from her husband until she finds her the answers, right? At this point, we're we're moving into bank heist number 2. That's going down. Um Agent Turner, she follows her instinct and she reaches out to the to a former cartel boss that she put away uh I think for 2 year 2 years ago, and his name is Solomon. I didn't remember. I didn't catch his last name, but his name is Solomon. Um, She put him away two years ago and she's given him a call because she thinks he may have something to do with the bank heist, right? Especially with the second bank heist, because he had money there. And only after talking to him, talking to him, uh, she learns that he had no involvement and he hinted that it could be fed over, right? So she go, so Agent Turner, after she figures that part out, she goes to her superior to inform him about her dealings with Federover in the past, when they cross paths in Gambia. Um, <clears throat> but he kind of blows her off and he, he, he blows her off. And that's until bank number three starts to, uh, the heist for bank number three starts to go down where then he like relents and he lets her interrogate or he tells her to go interrogate Federova, right? So now he's believing like, oh, this is bigger than what it was. Because prior to the second bank heist, they were thinking nothing of it. Um, But three, we're at number three in a row here. Um, So he tells her to, he tell, uh, her superior tells Agent Turner to go ahead and go interrogate Federova. And we also learn in that time that um, her code name, her meaning uh, Federova, her code name is Snow White. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in a minute too. So we see Agent Turner, who not only shared her subfile with uh, on Fe- Federova with the team, but she shared details about when they crossed paths in Gambia five years ago. She gives them that story. Tells them what happened. And the story includes the death of Federova's husband, Sergey, who died uh, 18 months ago. Right. So she's telling them what happened, how she poisoned the general or something like that. And then um, in that story, she also reveals that 18 months ago, Sergey, her husband, died. And so she was trying to get his ashes from Crimea. Crimea. Um, uh, Val also tells them that she suspects that Federova led them to the FBI on purpose, right? So it's not like she was captured based on their work. She led them to her. And so that's like the whole thing now of the story, trying to figure out, well, why did she lead them to her, right? There's a big why. Agent Val is the only one that that's convinced that there is a bigger reason here. There's a why, and we have to figure that out. This is not small. This is not just an incident. She's not trying to steal money. She she has a reason, and um, it will behoove all of them to try to figure out what that reason is. So I like um, that aspect of the show so far. Um, all right. Anyway, the big scene is when Elena Federova and Agent Val Turner meet face to face in the room. Right. They go through this all this dialogue and Elena reveals that she knows about Owen, which is Agent Turner's husband, that Val's husband and the pending divorce. And she kind of slips it in there like, oops, did I know? And she's like, hey, you 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 looked into my husband and she's like, you did the same. <laughs> I don't know. I just like the the back and forth between the two of them. Um, But in that conversation, she realized that um, the lawyer that Owen had, that that Owen had, Val's husband, the lawyer he used is the same firm as the partner of Federova's lawyer, right? Because after a while, she says, I want my lawyer. And she named the lawyer. And that so that just so happened to be the partner of the lawyer that's representing Owen. Mm, right? So it's tying together a little bit. 
Um, so anyway, Federover is just toying with Val Turner. She's messing with her head. It's like all psychological stuff here. Um, and in this moment, this is where all of it begins to connect. And we know that the story narrated by Federover at the beginning of the show, we now know that she's telling this story to Agent Turner. Um, so the show initially opens with Elena narrating a little story she describes as a fairy tale about a little girl and her father um, whom she loses her father in an accident. Uh, this was six months after the, the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, we see the little girl set off a missile with her father beside her. They killed the driver in the truck only to learn when they went to go look at the truck um, to make sure he was dead. They learn they see that there was a passenger and. Um, and that person escaped, uh, right? So they go around and looking, they find blood on a rock or bent trees or <laughs> branches or something like that to indicate, oh, this is the path that that person went. So they followed that trail and they found that it was a little girl that was hidden in the woods and she was the passenger in the truck. Um, uh, they find, so they found the little girl that was hidden in the woods and the other girl that set off the missile stabs that little girl in the abdomen. Um, so just hold on to that. Then we watch the story where we believed, um, as did Agent Turner, we believe that that first little girl who set off the missile, right? We believe that that was Federova and her father, right? That was Elena and her father. That's what we thought when the story opened. But we then learned that the girl that was stabbed in the abdomen, that was really Elena. And she wound up killing both that, that the other girl's father and the girl. Um, and she escaped. And that was just a story. Um, so her father, Elena's father, was the father that died in the truck that was hit by the missile. Um, and she was able to outsmart both the other little girl that set the missile along with her father. She uh, outsmarted them both and killed them both. <clears throat> um, of course, um, as she's narrating this or telling the story to Agent Turner, um, she shows the scar on her stomach to Agent Turner, where then it's revealed uh, or Agent Turner asked her, hey, you were pregnant or you gave birth, right? Because she could see the stretch marks. So um, where am I? Federova shows her her stomach. She learns that Federova, Federova gave birth and she questions if the father is Sergei. And she says, yes. Um, all right. There's a lot packed in this episode. So just bear with me for a second. I'm going to summarize in, the, in like 45 seconds. Um, later we see that they captured the inside man, Federova planted on the inside, right? And a the agent is trying to convince the others of the on the team, or Agent Turner is trying to convince the others on the team that this isn't a small incident. Federo Federova is very dangerous, and all of this is for a reason, and they should try to figure out what that reason is. Why is she doing it? Why did she lead the FBI to her? You know? She's trying to convince them that Elena Federova, she doesn't want power. She wants vengeance. And they should try to figure out why the heists are happening. And after she receives a call from Owen's lawyer, she meets with the lawyer. Oh, this is a little later on. A, uh, Val receives a call from Owen's lawyer. They meet somewhere and she informs where the lawyer informs Fed, uh, informs Val that Elena was the one that framed her husband and she could give her evidence um, to clear her husband's name if she cooperates, right? Um, and by this time, I think we're up to bank number seven. So it's nearing the end of the show where Val is meeting with Owen's lawyers and he has information that can clear Val husbands um, from the the crime he committed or the crime he's in jail for, right? Because he was framed by Elena. So this goes to show you that all these things that Elena has planned up to this point is for a reason. <laughs> and it's kind of revealing itself now and or pieces of the puzzle are being revealed um, in this episode. And so we're learning more and more. Um, 
And again, like I said, we're up to bank seven. And then they show a video that they got out of one of the safety deposit boxes where it's like a toy rabbit, wind up rabbit. Um, and it's the safety deposit box of the attorney general. And she hints that there are other things in that box that seem to catch his attention, you know? So it's some type of blackmail I, I think Elena is going to plan on using to threaten and target each of the people in the room. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so we know that just shows us that something, uh, the banks are a big part in this as well, in terms of um, will they now show something from every bank that is targeting someone in the room? Mm, we have to find out. Um, so overall, Elena took over seven banks but not for money, but for power, revenge, and something as simple as love. And remember her code name was Snow White. And then they said Snow White and the Seven Banks. <laughs> I thought that was clever. Um, at the end, we find that Sergey is still alive, right? They cut into the, the jail um, where the jail is. They're all outside. Sergey is still alive. He's in prison with Owen. Sergey tells Owen that he knows Elena is in charge now. Owen appears to be aware of what's going on, and, and they both are um, aware of the intention behind what Elena is doing, right? And Elena knows Sergey is alive. So Sergey's alive. Elena's already planned out and orchestrated all of these bank heists, all right? Seven of them. Um, we know something has, uh, we know that Elena framed Owen. And she has evidence, but she wants Val to cooperate with Elena, kind of pulling her to her side. Um, and in return, she can help free Owen, right? But what is, why does she want Val Turner to, you know, to cooperate? Why Val Turner? What's, what's, what's in it in their past, you know? Um, they did have a, they crossed paths in Gambia, but what is it about Val Turner that, that she's doing this, um, that she wants to like engage her or pull her to her side. That's what I want to know. Um, and then the episode fades with Elena Federova ready to tell another story to Agent Turner. So overall, I did like the first episode. It was a lot packed in this first episode. It was so much packed in this episode. Um, it moved really, really fast for me. Um, I like the I liked Elena's narration of the fairy tale story because that kind of develops her character, right? And we get insight to see how she became the person she is today, right? In present day. Um, and the way the episode ended, we're going to see more narration and more stories from Elena. Um, so I'm going to really pay attention to those stories, right? We know that the bank heists are important to the plot because Towards the end, they pulled out that safety deposit box and have something on the attorney general. Um, and there's seven banks that they, you know, there's seven banks. And so is each one of them going to be used to target, you know, not only the attorney general, but the director and everyone else in the room? Um, you know, so that's an important uh, component of the story or part of the plot, right? Uh, Sergey. Elena's husband, he's alive in jail. That's a big piece <laughs> of the puzzle to me. And the fact that Owen knows Sergey's alive, Elena knows Sergey alive, that, that's a whole nother piece of the puzzle. So clearly, um, Owen is part of this plot. So we should expect to see more from Owen. We should also expect to see more um, in terms of Val Turner, right? Her past, her history, how she grew up. Um, why is she so, what they described in the very first episode or when they were giving out uh, the trail, when they put out the trailers, they described her as principled, right? She's so principled and so righteous that she turned in her own husband. <laughs> so, what is that about? Like, we're going to see more develop in terms of Val Turner. Like, how does she become this way? How, how, what in her background is making her so righteous like this, right? 
There was so much packed in this first episode. Um, and if I'm honest, I really had to watch it twice a second time to see if I caught it all. And I think I might watch it again, but after the second episode. So once I watch the second episode, I'm going to rewatch the first episode to see if I can tie it in. And hopefully from here on out, my reviews and recaps will get a lot better. Um, there was a lot in this first episode because they had to introduce the characters. They had to begin the plot or the storyline. Um, and then I think it's just going to build from there. So we already are introduced to the main characters, Elena Fedorova and Val Turner. We know that there are seven bank heists. So that's already introduced into the storyline. Um, we know Owen, her husband, is in jail based on um, things that... He, uh, taking drug money, which now we know he was framed. So there's a connection between Elena and Owen in terms of being framed. Um, uh, the way Elena has orchestrated everything to get Val to acquiesce, so to, you know, or to get her to come over to her side. I mean, she's um, threatening her, uh, or Val is being threatened by divorce. The lawyers involved are Elena's lawyers <laughs> or the same firm, their partners. Um, so there's a connection there. Uh, what else? Uh, and we saw in the first episode that, um, Elena had inside people, right? One of the FBI agents were on, were on the inside that worked for Elena because that was the one that planted the note in the pocket of the attorney general. So there's so many elements to this whole, <laughs> this whole first episode and we're just going to see it develop from there. And I can't wait. Um, I like the first episode. I'm looking forward to the episode two. Episode two, episode two is titled fairy tale wedding. Hmm. So we have to see, we have to see. Um, but in that episode, we anticipate learning more about Val's past and how it becomes a part of the bigger play. So maybe we'll get some answers into why Val is the way she is and how this all connects. Um, but tell me, what do you think? Um, did you watch the episode? Uh, did you keep up with all of the clues <laughs> and everything that was going on in the episode? Did you have to watch it more than once like me? <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. I, I Sometimes I re when I want to get into the show and I really invest, I have to watch it more than once just so I can see um, if I caught everything. And hopefully it'll keep me engaged um, throughout the whole season. So I'm hoping for that. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Um, I'm interested to continue watching. Um, tell me what you think. Leave me a comment. I'm interested to see what you guys think. All right. And that's all I have. So be sure to come back and give me a listen. Give me a like, follow, share, and subscribe. You can leave me a comment and leave me a message. If you're listening to the podcast, there's a link to leave me a message um, right on that landing page. So check that out. You can find me by looking for Chatter Out Loud. I have this podcast. I tweet. I'm on YouTube. So look for Chatter Out Loud and you'll find me. All right. My name is Danielle and you're listening to my podcast, Chatter Out Loud. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I appreciate your support. And that's all I have. Thanks again for listening. And I'll talk to you next time.